Hello and welcome back to the channel. Well, we are going to be looking at a very noteworthy topic today. We're going to be talking about genetically modified mosquitoes. Now, whenever you hear that something has been genetically modified, your ears should automatically perk up and say, or you should ask the question, why are they changing the original state of this thing? Well, the report that I'm going to share with you is going to um, outline why they are doing this. But is this a good idea? What they're doing, is it a good idea? Of course, you're going to hear all of the necessary jargon to convince you that what they're doing is all right and that is for your good. But listen at the concerns that others have about this as well. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and roll this, this audio report and I will be right back. The Environmental Protection Agency has cleared the release of 2.4 billion genetically modified mosquitoes in California and Florida. The mosquitoes, created by biotech firm Oxitech, will be non-biting 80s Egypti males engineered to only produce viable male offspring, per the company. Oxitech says the plan will reduce numbers of the invasive 80s Egypti, which can carry diseases like Zika, yellow fever and dengue. Female mosquitoes will die, while males will reproduce and spread the self-limiting gene to the next generation, eventually leading to population declines. While these diseases aren't yet spreading in California, the invasive insect has been flagged as a growing risk as their numbers increase across the state, reports The Guardian's Gabrielle Cannon. Given the growing health threat this mosquito poses across the U.S., we're working to make this technology available and accessible, Oxitec CEO Gray Franson says in a statement. These pilot programs, wherein we can demonstrate the technology's effectiveness in different climate settings, will play an important role in doing so. The mosquitoes will also contain a genetic marker so that scientists can easily identify them from wild populations, Peroxitec. The experiment is an extension of a pilot project that the EPA approved in 2020, the company says. In 2021, Oxitec released 144,000 genetically modified mosquitoes in the Florida Keys. It also released mosquitoes in Brazil, claiming that after 13 weeks, the technology suppressed 95% of 80s Egypti. Its ingenious Mustafa Debaun, a medical and veterinary entomologist and general manager of the Delta Mosquito and Vector Control District, tells Mashable's Mark Kaufman. Instead of using a human being to apply a pesticide to kill these mosquitoes, we're using male mosquitoes to do the job for us, it's nature against nature. But critics aren't convinced the mosquitoes will be entirely safe. There's no such thing as 100% effective in science, Dana Pearls, the food and technology program manager with Friends of the Earth, tells The Guardian. Yet the public is being asked to trust that Oxitec's experiment will work and no, genetically engineered, female mosquitoes will survive. But how do we know that? The Guardian reports opponents are concerned about the mosquitoes coming in contact with tetracycline, an antibiotic used in agriculture, that the publication says would allow female mosquitoes to survive. Supporters say the mosquitoes rarely travel more than 500 feet from where they're born, reports Lisa M. Krieger for Mercury News. EPA regulations require that the mosquitoes cannot be released within 500 meters of wastewater treatment facilities, commercial citrus, apple, pear, nectarine, peach growing areas, or commercial cattle, poultry and pig livestock producers, per The Guardian. Still, critics say more tests should take place in controlled environments. Once released into the environment, genetically engineered mosquitoes cannot be recalled, Dr. Robert Gould, president of San Francisco Bay Physicians for Social Responsibility, tells Mercury News. Rather than forge ahead with an unregulated, open-air genetic experiment, we need precautionary action, transparent data and appropriate risk assessments. Okay, so when you listen at the information and you hear what they're saying and the reasons that they are giving, you might be convinced that this is a great idea. But if you look at the history of what happens when science starts to fumble around or mess around with nature, it doesn't always turn out the way that they say. This is why there were some who had concerns. They said, well, how do we know it's gonna work out the way that you are saying? How do we know this? Whenever you are messing around with nature, 
something that the Most High intended to be a certain way. You are opening up a can of worms. But the, the public is basically expected to just trust what the scientists are saying in this. Like they always say, trust the science. That's a very powerful statement to make. When you say trust the science, most people look at science or scientists like they are the smartest people on the planet. Not saying that they are not, okay? Not saying that they don't have their place, right? We understand that there are some very uh, revolutionary scientific things that are happening and um, discoveries that have been made. Um, of course, we know this, but not everything uh, that comes from science is good. You have things being created in a lab that goes completely against nature. Uh, things that have destroyed nature. Come on now. We have to look at things realistically. We can't just say, trust the science, and people are supposed to just blindly do that. Just because something comes from science doesn't mean that it cannot be questioned. So people have a right to be concerned about something such as this, especially since mosquitoes do spread disease. Because they do spread disease, everyone has a right to be concerned. And I know with everything that we've heard uh, scientists doing, I just recently shared uh, something where um, they were spraying things. Uh, well, it was the military, but uh, of course, where did they get the, uh, the, the chemicals to do this? I don't know if they got it from science or not. But all I know is when you have officials, whether uh, scientific or uh, military or uh, governmental, when you have people with high positions that are supposedly over the rest of us, and they are making decisions and pulling strings that will affect people's lives, I think folk have a right to know what's going on. As a matter of fact, more than just a right, I think you should have a voice as well. I don't think it should be just left up to science or government or any of that or big corporations as to whether or not something like this is released into the general population. Just like spraying. All of this different stuff that they are spraying in communities because they want to test something out. Even the chemtrails. Shouldn't people have a right to know what they are being subjected to. That's my take on this. I want to know what yours is. Share your thoughts below in the comment section, but remember, as always, to keep it tight and keep it right. But until next time. Be sure to ring the bell to be notified of new uploads on this channel and also comment, share, like, and subscribe.